Imagine your heart racing non-stop, your brain shrinking under pressure, or your gut twisting into knots, all from stress and anxiety that just won't quit. Chronic stress and anxiety don't just mess with your mind, they can silently cause problems with multiple systems throughout your entire body, from increasing your risk of heart disease, to fueling fatigue, and even suppressing your immune system. So today, we're going to learn how long-term stress can wreck your brain, heart, gut, immune system, and more, as well as discuss how anxiety turns up that volume. But we can't just talk about all the bad, we also have to talk about some of the practical tips that you can use to fight back against stress and anxiety, which at the end will include some of my own personal hot takes on what it really takes for a person to be mentally healthy. So it could be a scary one, but let's jump into this anatomical and physiological awesomeness. So first, I just want to mention that this video actually could be considered part two of our stress video series. And in part one, we went into the details of the stress response. So if you missed it, I'll link it at the end of this video. But for a quick recap, when you perceive stress or a threat, your brain's hypothalamus that you can see here triggers the fight or flight response in what you could consider three waves. The first ultra fast neural response from the sympathetic nervous system will immediately ramp up your heart rate constrict blood vessels in certain areas to shunt more blood to your muscles and brain, open your airways, activate sweat glands, and much more within milliseconds. The second, somewhat fast adrenaline boost comes on about 30 seconds later, when the adrenaline secreted in the bloodstream by the adrenal glands reaches some of those same target organs, which will bolster or further enhance those responses like increased heart rate, changes in blood flow, opening the airways, etc. And the third, slower cortisol surge sustains it all, prepping your body for prolonged action. And again, if you want more details, you can get those in the first video. But we also touched on the idea that some short-term or acute stress isn't all bad and can actually be a great thing. For example, exercise. Even acute emotional stress, like prepping for a big presentation, can sharpen your focus and get you through it. But chronic stress, long-term stress, that's when things start to go sideways. Studies show that prolonged exposure to cortisol and adrenaline can weaken and affect multiple body systems over time. And if you combine anxiety with stress, it's like stress on steroids, which that pun was definitely intended because cortisol is technically a steroid hormone. But this can often manifest as persistent worry that keeps your body in a low level alert state, which can amplify physical symptoms. And so let's break down these negative effects system by system. Stress and anxiety can hit your nervous system hard. Chronic cortisol exposure can shrink certain parts of your brain, like the hippocampus, which handles memory and learning, explaining why stressed folks often feel boggy and forgetful. Anxiety ramps this up by overactivating the amygdala, your brain's fear center, leading to heightened emotional responses and even more stress. Over time, this can contribute to anxiety disorders, depression, or fatigue from constant mental exhaustion. And so if you've ever felt wiped out after a long day of stress, that is in part due to your brain burning through ATP like it's in survival mode. Chronic stress can also have negative effects on your endocrine system, which is the system made up of multiple glands that secrete various hormones. Now, we already touched on the adrenal glands in part one, but chronic stress can sustain elevated cortisol from the adrenal cortex, which can mess with other endocrine glands. For example, high cortisol can lead to insulin resistance, increasing the risk of type two diabetes. It can also suppress your thyroid gland and therefore thyroid function, slowing your metabolism and adding to fatigue even more. And here's what a real thyroid gland looks like if you are curious. In women, elevated cortisol levels can also disrupt menstrual cycles. And in men, it often lowers testosterone. And anxiety often exacerbates this by creating this feedback loop or this vicious cycle. Worrying spikes cortisol, which fuels more anxiety, which keeps the cortisol coming. One of the scariest impacts of chronic stress is on your heart and other cardiovascular system structures. Adrenaline increases your heart rate and causes your blood vessels to constrict, raising your blood pressure. In the short term, like if your friend jumps out and scares you, this is fine. And even a good thing if we're talking about the adrenaline release during an exercise session. But chronically, this can lead to hypertension, a leading cause of heart disease and stroke. Recent data from 2025 shows stress-related heart issues are spiking, especially post-pandemic, with over half of US workers reporting anxiety about job security impacting their overall stress levels, which links to higher cardiovascular risks. Anxiety adds to this with creating symptoms like chest pain or palpitations, 
which are often harmless but definitely alarming because they mimic heart problems and create more worry. Also, take a look at this heart. Chronic stress can cause plaque to build up in these coronary arteries that feed the heart itself. This is driven by elevated cortisol and adrenaline, which can inflame and damage the inside lining of these arteries. This makes the wall sticky, letting LDL cholesterol to slip in, oxidize, and form these plaques. Chronic high blood pressure also exacerbates this process, and if plaques rupture, they can trigger clots, ultimately leading to heart attacks. But what about your digestive system? Have you ever felt butterflies or nauseous when you're anxious? That's no coincidence. Stress diverts blood from your gut to your muscles, slowing digestion, which can cause issues like acid reflux, IBS, or constipation. Cortisol can inflame the gut lining, called the tunica mucosa, that you can see here on the inside lining of the stomach, and even over here on the small intestine. And this inflammation of the tunica mucosa may increase the risk of ulcers and interfere with nutrient absorption. Anxiety often worsens this with symptoms like upset stomach or loss of appetite. In severe cases, chronic stress can link to weight gain from cortisol-driven cravings for sugary foods, as well as elevated blood glucose levels caused by the cortisol. And we can't forget about the musculoskeletal system, because this is another place where stress and anxiety shines, or aches, because stress causes muscles to tense up as part of the fight or flight response. But chronically, this can lead to persistent tightness, especially in the muscles of the neck, shoulders, and back. And this can trigger tension headaches, which it feels like this tight band around one's head, or even trigger migraines. Studies link anxiety directly to headaches, as people with anxiety are significantly more likely to have frequent headaches. Fatigue also often follows because tense muscles burn more energy, leaving you drained, and anxiety amps this up even more by keeping the sympathetic nervous system fired up, leading to jaw clenching, poor posture, and that constant exhaustion. And if you're a jaw clencher, imagine one of the most powerful muscles in the body, the masseter, that you can see here, just being tense 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not surprising that this could cause issues. Stress also takes a toll on your immune system by suppressing it. Cortisol dials down white blood cells by inhibiting their proliferation and promoting cell death, making you more prone to infections like colds or even slowing wound healing. Chronic anxiety weakens this further, increasing risk for autoimmune issues where your body turns on itself, often through sustained inflammation and immune dysregulation. And let's not forget about sleep. Stress can trash your sleep. High cortisol at night keeps you wired, leading to insomnia or restless nights. Poor sleep then ramps up anxiety even more and fatigue, creating this vicious cycle. And over time, this raises your risks for obesity, diabetes, and mental health declines. Okay. So that was a lot of different ways that your body can pay for the price for chronic stress and anxiety. But here's the hopeful part. Your body is incredibly resilient. And with some simple strategies, you can turn things around and protect yourself from these effects. And the first thing I want to mention about managing stress is perception. Stress is often about events that haven't even happened yet. And much of the time, they never do happen. We spend all this time worrying about the future what ifs. What if I fail this test? What if I don't get this job? What if my boss doesn't like me? What if this person yells at me? And if we keep doing this, those what ifs tend to get bigger and bigger. What if I go outside and get trampled by a rogue elephant that escaped from the zoo? What if these bodies behind me decide to start the zombie apocalypse and rise up and eat me? But again, realize that much of the time, these negative what ifs don't even happen. And you waste all this time stressing yourself out for nothing. Something else that is very interesting about how perception influences stress is that we can all perceive the exact same stimulus completely differently. Some of us might view a stimulus as a complete and total threat that stresses us out, whereas someone else might perceive that exact same stimulus as something completely benign and non-threatening. Like, let me give you this example. By the time I got into my medical training, I'd gotten to a place where I didn't stress nearly as much about tests. Yes, I would still study hard, sometimes have some very late nights, but by the time I got to the test, I kind of just had this mentality of, I'm either ready for it or I'm not. And if I fail, I'll just have to figure it out. But I had classmates that were a complete wreck. People would be in tears over a piece of paper because of what they perceived this piece of testing paper meant. That paper, the test, was the exact same stimulus 
for every single student in that classroom. It's not like some of the students got a test that told them they were going to die if they didn't pass or that they were a poopy human being, but each student still perceived that what that paper meant to them differently. And so I say all this in hopes that you know that we can retrain our brains with consistent thoughtful practice to start perceiving things as less threatening, helping us to decrease the amount of stress that we carry with us on a daily basis. Another tool to help you reduce stress is likely not going to shock you, and that is exercise. Exercise is a game changer. Not only are there multiple other reasons to exercise, but for stress, it burns off excess cortisol, boosts endorphins to lift mood, and even strengthens your heart and muscles against tension. Ideally, this would be a mixture of resistance training and cardio, with that cardio having a mixture of steady state zone two with some high intensity sessions mixed in. And I have a weekly cardio plan that you can download if you need something to start with, and we'll put that in the description. And can we all just please, please take some time every single day to unplug, put the phone down, remove the ear pods from the external ear anatomy, and just unplug from the media, and just sit and listen to your own thoughts. I know that may sound a little scary for some of you, but just do it, your mental health will thank you. Now I do understand this could sound a little hypocritical coming from me since I make online content and post things on social media, so I'm not saying you can't watch any social media, I'm just saying take dedicated, intentional time away from it. I usually do it during exercise, and I don't want to sound like I'm too much of an exercise snob here, but I'll sometimes go to the gym and see nearly every single person still connected to the media. I don't like that for me. I know this may sound a little cheesy, but I kind of want to hear myself breathing. I want to feel that discomfort. And especially when I'm trail running, I want to hear my feet hitting the dirt, stepping on leaves, hearing the sounds of nature. Again, I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but that's just me. I can't tell you how many times I've run up on people while I'm out on the trails and they're doing this. Or they have their ear pods in and they can't hear me coming. I'll try to make some noise so that they know I'm coming, like the Steve Rogers on your left. Don't say it. Don't you say it. On your left. Come on! But a lot of times they still won't hear me. And when I pass them, they jump and get scared, triggering their fight or flight response. And my snobbish self is like, that's your own fault for not unplugging while in nature. Now, I'm not saying you can't listen to a podcast or music or have some media while you're exercising. Just find some time during the day when you can unplug from the matrix. And this next tool could be the time that you do this. And that is some sort of mindfulness practice such as meditation or deep breathing. And this isn't just some hippie practice. Deep breathing actually activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is sometimes referred to as the rest and digest system. And this has some opposing effects to the sympathetic nervous system. And so this can help lower heart rate, lower blood pressure, decrease respiratory rate, enhance mood and emotional regulation. There are multiple breathing techniques out there that you can use, but I personally like box breathing, which involves a structured pattern of inhaling, holding, exhaling, and holding again, each for an equal count of about three to four seconds, which mimics the sides of a square or a box. You could aim for a total of three to five minutes, and you could do it close to bedtime to start ramping you down for that all important sleep. Now I do wanna mention that I'm definitely not perfect at this stuff. I've had a panic attack before. I've had varying levels of stress. We all do. But our goal is to constantly try to grow as humans and try to get better and better at managing all the stresses that are coming towards us so we can protect all of this anatomical and physiological awesomeness that's inside of us. But I do also want to acknowledge that sometimes we can get to a point where we just need help. And that may be in the form of a mental health professional and even the use of medications. I'm personally one of those that tries to avoid medications but I've seen enough patients in our clinic that are in crisis where a medication really did help them get to a place where they could manage their stress and anxiety. And some of them, when they got to a better place, were able to taper off those medications, while others chose to maintain the use of that medication to some degree. Either way, if you feel like you're at a breaking point, please do not hesitate to reach out to friends, family members, and mental health professionals that can help give you additional tools so that you can, again, protect all that anatomical and physiological awesomeness that's inside of you. If studying and learning has at times started to feel a little dull, or worse, like it's going to induce a massive fight or flight response, I have something that can help re-engage and reignite your passion for learning. Plus, you can try it for free. And that is the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform that helps you get smarter every single day. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, 
and even AI. Brilliant's lessons are designed to be uniquely effective, as their first principles approach builds understanding from the ground up through problem solving and engaging hands-on exploration, which hands-on exploration is definitely something that we can relate to here in an anatomy lab. And all this turns you into a better thinker and not just a memorizer. And of course, the science nerd in me is going to geek out about brilliant science courses, as these courses help you make sense of our universe at every level, from the mechanics of simple machines all the way up to the mind-bending physics of black holes. And so if you want to try Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org slash IHA or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for watching and supporting our channel, everyone. And of course, we'll see you in our next video.